Welcome once again to You Comment, We Respond. We have some fun hands to talk about today. We do. The first one was a baffling World Series of Poker hand, as we titled it. If you want to see that hand, click right up there. There are some weird plays in that hand. You make it sound like it's not as baffling when you say, as we titled it, as if somehow... Well, it was titled that, and yeah. it also is baffling. Okay, well, that's Is better. that okay for you? I like that Is that better. okay for you? It is now better. We're going to fight. Let's hear what the folks had to say. Okay. Adam Watkins says, you are letting Kawauch off way too easy in your analysis. Kawauch, of course, is the one who folded the flush on the turn. Yeah. That fold was jaw-dropping. You should also evaluate whether he should raise all in rather than call, given the stack size and that naked trips will call there a lot, hoping to house up as well as ace of hearts and queen of hearts draws, not to mention ace king, king queen, and the rare inferior flush. He must make these hands pay. In sum, Kawuch's fold is at least as bad as Lin's turn donk, which was in fact, as you did point out, really a continuation bet. Okay, well, I disagree. Yeah. I think the turn donk is awful. One of the worst plays I've seen. It's not a donk, but he's continuing yeah. to aggress, and it is terrible. It is we terrible. Think. I understand where you're coming from with Kauch folding here. I think right. we did think that was bad. We just thought it was defensible. We could figure out theoretically why he might do that. I think moving in is a disaster. I think that's really bad. All these hands you say are going to call. They're not. They're all going to fold. They're going to fold to a move-in. So he's getting called by all better hands and folding out all worse hands. We don't like that here. You might get called by a worse flush once in a while. Maybe, but yeah. they might actually fold. They I might mean, find a fold. When Lin bets five blinds and then Kauch goes in for 36 more blinds, yeah. I think you know smaller what? flushes are probably going to find a on fold. The, on the paired board yeah. especially. Yeah, that's a good point. A jack is never calling. Never calling. A ace king, the ace of hearts, the queen of hearts, all these things are folding. Man. Yeah, they're all folding. Also, he doesn't have ace king ever. Pretty much Lind. Lind, yeah, yeah. that's true. That's so, true. yeah, I disagree with the move in as an idea. I do agree. The fold was a wee bit tight. You know, it was like, I mean, you can't fold there. We, I mean, and on its surface, when we watched this video for the first time, we both thought the fold was the worst play in the hand. But yeah. upon talking about it for an hour on our podcast, as we do, we think that the turn bet by Lind is there's just no merit to it. There's yeah. nothing good about it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, Joe Capic Warrior cool. says. Lind betting on the turn is his only way out of the hand. Well, it turned out that way. He yeah. represented a strong hand by donking the flop, and if he doesn't bet here, he'll never win this hand. On the turn, his opponents can evaluate his range like King Jack. Well, King Jack is is really good, right? Yeah. King Jack is, oh, that's the point, okay. Pocket sixes and even ace do suited to ace seven suited because he is this deep. It's a cheap way to win the pot, and makes anyone with top pair or two pair a hard decision because it looks like he's valuing a flush max or a full house with two opponents behind him. The sizing makes sense. However, Kawa Uchis fold doesn't. Okay, so there's a couple problems with this, I think. Yeah. Why don't you go ahead? Okay. The whole notion, first of all, that he has to win this hand is I, I don't agree with. Yeah. You're allowed to lose hands. This is the way it works, Once right? it gets called in two spots on the flop, it's usually time to lose the hand. Like, we get to win once in a while when yeah. someone makes a ridiculous fold, but mostly this bet is just going to cost us chips. So when you say it's his only way out, it's his only way out because that's the way it worked out. Yeah. But usually whoever's sitting in Kawa Uchi's seat is going to call, and then Lin's going to shut down on the river and it's going to cost himself an extra five or six blinds. Right. But he could have just check folded on the turn when it's a very easy check fold because you think you're never really going to fold out any of these better hands. No, you don't expect a jack to fold. No. Maybe maybe you can fold out king, queen, and ace king. Yeah. But maybe not because he bet pretty small. But why are we turning our hand into a bluff yeah. anyway? We're too, our hand is too good right now to turn into a bluff. If it checks through, we might have the best hand still. We can win that way. We don't have to bluff. Part of the perplexing nature of this bet is we struggled with figuring out if it's value or a bluff. Like, yeah. If it's value, it doesn't really make sense because it's really hard to get called by a worse hand at this point. It but if it's a value. bluff, it doesn't really make sense either because I know Kyle Uch folded a flush, but Lin can't really expect anybody to fold a jack or better here. Right. And he really probably shouldn't expect anybody to fold king queen even. I mean, maybe King Queen can maybe fold. Maybe King Queen. Maybe King Queen with the Queen of Hearts is in a tougher spot and has to consider calling. I think King Queen can really strongly consider they can, folding. Okay, fine, but that's not that many hints. No, no, yeah. we block that. Also, we've got a King yeah. in our hand as Lind. Right. So, although it worked as a bluff, I know it's the only way out of the hand because we know what Kawuch had and that yeah. Kawuch actually folded. It doesn't mean that we should be bluffing here expecting hearts to fold. No, the, the proper play for sure is you check and then you fold one of the, one of the other yeah. two guys' bets and you go on with your day and you wait for better spots. Yeah. Just because it worked out doesn't make it right. 
Next up, we have Head Scratcher at the Aussie Millions. Many of you commented on the way we pronounced the word Aussie, because <laughs> we were saying Aussie. Sorry. So we apologize. You're not getting read here. You're getting acknowledged for it, except for this. But still, thank you for pointing out our terrible we're pronunciation. We're ignorant Americans. Deal with it. Yeah. If you yeah. want to check out the hand, though, click right up there. Come back here. Here we go. Osif Kincaid. Frequent commenter. Says, by the way, since we figure out new factors that cause cancer every day, I'm pretty sure in 10 years, McDonald's turn bet is going to be found to be one of them. <laughs> wow. I know, right? So he's not liking McDonald's turn bet. I think McDonald's turn bet is okay because he called the raise, and it means that there was more going on than just, I'm betting, hoping the guy falls. Although, I, I mean, I, I see where Osif is coming from yeah. here. If I were McDonald's, I would never consider betting the turn with my <laughs> no. six. I mean, maybe if I didn't pick up a six, I would consider betting the oh, turn. Yeah. It's weird. I mean, I guess it's just a bluff, but... yeah. It's a weird bluff. And then he decides to turn it into value. It's interesting that he ends up calling and pretty cool, actually. I mean, he doesn't turn it into value. He turns it into a bluff catcher, yeah, right? Yeah, right. But I hear what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. All right. Gunjan Mall says, All right. It takes balls to overbet after turn check raise is called. I was in a similar spot last week and gave up on the river after I hit a pair. Really hard to get make the river play. I think there's some English issues here. Right. But he's saying it's really hard to sort of pull the trigger oh, we know. on the huge overbet after you've just been called when you check raise. That's a fair point. I absolutely agree with that. But when Joseph check raises to such a small amount, he has to pull the trigger right. or it is a completely losing play. Right. Yeah. We actually haven't reached the true inflection point of the hand yet. It just feels like we have as Joseph. If we had check raised bigger and McConnell then has to call a huge amount on the turn, now we've already hit the inflection point. It feels like he's committed. Here he may not be. I don't know if he's calling the river or not with that six. I suspect he is. He might be. But I still think it's probably right to shove here. As if, Joseph. if we shove, he might fold. I mean, that's... I don't know if he's going to fold or not. He may find a call anyway. But anyway, I think it's right to move in. One day you're going to get McDonald's name right. By I, the way. I've it's, got been, it's been McDonald's. It's been McConnell. <laughs> <laughs> and McDonald. I mean, in fairness, other people have these other names, I'm saying. Just yeah. not this guy. Yeah, not this guy. Mark, Mark McDonald. Yes. And Jeremy Joseph. Right. I know their names. Those guys. It's fine. All right, our final hand today is the second hand from Aussie Millions Week. Sorry, okay, Aussie. Aussie. Aus. Aussie. Aussie Millions. Say Aussie. Use your so, mouth. So there's a Oz. guy in Australia. Australia? Australia. He got quads. <laughs> if you want to see that hand, click right up there. It happened in Aus Australia. <laughs> <laughs> TT Everywhere 97 says, I disagree, guys. I think he should call the flop bet. The reason is that he is going to have a lot of ace high, a f ace four or pocket pair type hands that are going to want to call. So he needs to call with great hands, quads and trips, so that the J Ram can't simply run him over with big turn bets. By calling with the nuts, the J Ram can't bet as big since he'll be afraid of Heath having a great hand. Also, a call disguises his hand and he can get a lot more value on the turn and river. He doesn't in this case. Okay, interesting points. This yeah. is uh, in re reply to your theory that it would be kind of a cool play for Heath to check raise quads on the flop. Yeah, I wasn't saying he should always do it, but yeah. I think it's actually, it might be even the right play in this particular right. spot. There's one thing I want to take issue with in that comment, and that is that the JRAM is going to run him over with big turn bets when he check raise, when he calls the flop. Right, he's yeah. not going to do that. He's probably not going to do that. There's two tens out there. Yeah. So it's probably not going to happen really ever because what is the JRAM repping at that point? I mean, if we think about it from the point of view of what hands is the JRAM three betting, right? Yeah. So usually that's a pretty tight range. Now, from the bits that I've seen, I haven't seen all of this live stream or anything close to it. The JRAM wasn't doing kind of any three betting at all, except with really good hands that, that I saw anyway. So if that's the case, if his range is going to be that tight, we assume he's often not going to take another shot with ace king on a double on a paired board with tens there, right? Once we call ones, he's just probably going to give up unless he improves with an ace or a king on the turn. But over pairs might really get a little crazy with us here if we check raise, because who would believe we have a hand as strong as quads? Doesn't mean we always have to raise all of our strong hands. We don't have to raise every time we have trip tens. But I think quads is kind of sexy to raise. <laughs> it's kind of fun to raise quads, isn't it? Yeah. You know, nobody expects you to raise quads. That said, I agree calling is fine. And yeah. we said that. We said calling is totally fine. That was just an idea, something to try. Yeah. Know? I think, you know, when your opponent thinks you can't really ever have a super strong hand, it's a good time to make the play. Yeah. Now, of course, we can have trip tens. That's pretty strong too. All right. Ashke Limay. All right. 
Wow, does that mean one can call a three bet out of position and wait for paired board and take this line? With your analysis, he can win 80 to 90% of hands with paired board against over pair. This can't be right. I think Heath balances his blocker bet range because he will put a blocker bet with jacks and nines as well instead of calling with it. And queen should call the river bet for given value. Queens has to be right only 25% of the time. And Heath should be able to put a blocker bet or value bet bluff around the same percentage of times. All right, I want to take issue with two things in that one. Please. The first one being that it's going to work 80 to 90% of the time as a bluff. Yeah. A king came on the turn. Right. That changes everything. It I sure think does. the J Ram calls if the turn's a deuce or something. It's a completely different situation. I mean, honestly, any non ace or king, and it goes check, check on the turn, and no ace or king on the river either, but J Ram's calling 100% of the yeah. time. Yeah, so it? that's a big piece that we missed there. Um, what was the I don't second know if part? We missed it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was missed. Yeah, it was missed. What was the second part of that comment? <laughs> well, now I got to look again. Yeah. So, you know, play some hold music or something. Okay. All right. Do, do, do. Um, he's, well, he says he thinks he balances his blocker oh, bet. Oh, the range. blocker bet. That's yeah. the second thing I wanted to take yeah. issue with. I don't think that even really counts as a blocker bet at that point because he's folding out all worse hands, right? If he bets pocket nines or pocket jacks. I mean, I think so. I think it's really likely that he's folding out pocket eights for sure. He's folding out ace highs. Yeah, he's definitely folding so, it. I mean, pocket eights might decide to hero, they, but it's unlikely. It's really not a time for a blocker bet. It seems like a very So I don't time. think that he should have a balanced blocker bet with his quads range here, because why would you blocker bet jacks or nines here? You also, there's no value to be had by doing that. You're also sort of saying we're championing, a, or you're championing a strategy. Championing? Championing. Championing a strategy where you would call a raise out of position, hoping the board pairs so you can check call, hoping it goes check, check <laughs> on the turn so you can bluff the river. That's quite a parlay to pull off. I, I wouldn't plan for that. I mean, he's really saying that once the board is paired and you've called out of position in a three bet pot, that you can always, or 80 to 90% right. of the time win. But the main thing that you're missing is the king on the turn. Right. I mean, Heath has some kings in his range, mostly ace king, but it, also means that Vijayram has kings in his range, and Heath would not want to bet with worse than a king then. And let's remember, this is a high level ICM spot. We're at the final table yeah. of the Aussie millions. See, I said Aussie. The Aussie millions. The Aussie millions. So there's a lot more money involved, and they can't get any more chips. This isn't like a cash game. It's not a one, two, two, five, five, ten cash game where you could say, like, well, I want to be balanced here, I want to be this, I want to be that. It's good to be balanced. Yeah. For sure. You want to take optimal lines whenever you can, but you don't always have to. You can be really exploitive and make a fold, you know, the way that we saw Vijayram do because those chips are just so valuable. It's okay to be wrong sometimes as Vijay Rim, and we would assume Heath is less likely to be bluffing than he might in other spots. Right, and then it comes down to the blocker bet, which we don't believe is happening. Right.